Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we will study lipids. Now, lipids are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like carbohydrates. But the proportion of oxygen is less than that of carbon and hydrogen. Because recall, in the carbohydrates, the proportion of carbon and oxygen were always equal. But in the lipids, there is much less oxygen in every molecule of the lipid. So otherwise, just like the carbohydrates, the lipids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, the two categories of lipids, namely fats, and oils fats are solids lipids at room temperature so these fats are solids at room temperature well on the other hand oils are liquids at room temperature that is the difference and also you find that uh, Fats is mainly found in animal cells, while oils are mainly found in plant cells. But in terms of physical property, fats are solids at room temperature, while oils are liquids at room temperature. Otherwise, chemically, they are all the same, and they have the same chemical properties. Now, each lipid molecule is made up of two types of molecules namely one is a glycerol and three fatty acids so one glycerol and three fatty acids combine through the process of condensation to form one lipid and in this process of condensation three water molecules are removed during the condensation process, I can illustrate here using diagrams. Here, one glycerol combines with three fatty acids to form one lipid. The chemical name of a lipid molecule is triglyceride. So here we have the triglyceride consisting of the glycerol and the three fatty acids molecule. Then three water molecules are removed in the process. Now, there's only one type of glycerol in nature, but fatty acids are many. There are many different types of fatty acids. So it is the nature of the fatty acids that determines the nature of the lipid that is formed. So we have different types of lipids depending on the types of fatty acids that make it up. And based on that, we have different functions and even properties. Because for it to be solid at room temperature, and that means only certain types of fatty acids are present. And also for it to be liquid at room temperature, then it possesses only certain types of fatty acids. But do not look into those details. Now, when it comes to properties of lipids, the properties include, one, their insolubility in water. Fatty acids are insoluble in water, but they are soluble in organic solvents such as ethanol, acetone, and ether. In such solvents, they tend to form an emulsion. They tend to form an emulsion in these organic solvents. Now, an emulsion consists of very tiny droplets of one liquid suspended in another. In an emulsion, the droplets remain suspended because they are too small to settle. They are too small to sediment. So they remain suspended. So that is one property of the lipids. The ability to form 
animalsion in certain organic solvents or also in the presence of certain emulsifying agents certain emulsifying agents like certain salts will also bring about the emulsion process but naturally lipids are insoluble in water they may dissolve in water or form an, an emulsion in water in the presence of certain emulsifying agents otherwise they form emulsions in organic solvents such as ethanol and ether secondly lipids are chemically inert that is they are unreactive and because of that they are quite stable and this second property suits them very well to their functions that uh, we now list here the functions of lipids one because of the insolubility and their chemical stability they make up perfect structural components for example membranes of cell and organelles two they are a source of energy when broken down because lipids can be quite compact they can be compacted and thus occupy relatively small volume in space they are deal for storage of food substance they are deal for storage of energy so that when the energy is required the lipid is mobilized and then broken down to provide energy during respiration in fact per unit gram lipids do provide more energy than carbohydrate third function is thermal insulation especially in animals where fats deposited under the skin where it forms the adipose adipose tissue acts as a heat insulator thereby assisting in reducing heat loss mammals that live in cold climates tend to have thick adipose tissue under the skin for example the polar bear in order to reduce the loss of body heat to the surrounding fourth is storage lipids as i mentioned earlier being very compact are ideal storage compound they are ideal storage compound within the body five protection lipids especially the fat deposit around internal organs like the heart the kidney act as shock absorbers for example at the back of the eyeball there's a layer of fat that acts as a shock absorber so that the eyeball is not crushed against the bony wall of the eye socket also by surrounding internal organs they do provide some cushion and also act as shock absorbers and then six the sixth function of lipids is that they act as a source of metabolic water this is because when lipids are oxidized they tend to release a lot of water in fact they release more water as a byproduct than carbohydrates so there are certain animals in fact that uh, that live in areas where water is scarce so they rely mainly on this metabolic water obtained from the breaking down of fat for their metabolic reactions for example we have desert mammals the camel and the kangaroo rat that store fat and when this fat is broken down they utilize the water that is released for their cellular reactions 
So this helps to supplement the little or non-existent water in their desert environment.